I'm just going to restart this. Oh, great. Uh, so we've got a good combination of ways people can uh, get involved. <laughs> cool. <coughs> no, uh, no response from uh, Kat? No. Okay. So we'll, uh, well, we can. Uh, and did you get confirmation from her today? Um, well, she had signed back. Uh, like it's okay if she doesn't. We can. Uh, I mean, we just, it's exactly four o'clock. But it's, oh, yeah, it, my I think clock is five minutes fast. So stay with us a little bit, Paul. Okay. Oh, also, we've got uh, Mr. Kramer here who's videographing this, which uh, I'll have to uh, give him a picture of you that I was given. Um, let's see here. Send this to Kramer. Sure. And put here. Oh, Gil. Gil. And I'll grab the picture here. Uh, here. If you need it, there's lots of video uh, on our website under <coughs> the research tab. So we've got a number of different interviews we've done. With equity.com and other companies like that. Yeah, no, this is mostly just uh, trying to uh, give a photo to Kramer. So he, what he can do is when he's uploading the uh, video, he can put your picture on. Okay, so I just did that okay. to Mr. Kramer. Did you text her? Uh, yeah, yeah, you know what? I, I'm, Where is your phone? Not, phone. Uh, it's just... Look at that. There she is. There she is. Uh -huh. He so, was blaming his phone for not being able to reach you. Yeah, his just to kind of let you know, we have, uh, we have a, a guest on the phone. That's okay. <laughs> just, uh, he comes in winded. <laughs> I just took the stairs. You did? Oh, oh my God. God. The, the elevator was weird on me, too. It went really <laughs> slow. I could have, like, <clears throat> ran up here faster. Okay. So, Paul, we, <laughs> so, Paul, we also have another co-host here. Catherine Harris is a CPA. So uh, what we'll do is, uh, I'll, uh, Mark, you've got a pretty good handle on this, so we're going to let you kind of ask a lot of the questions, <coughs> and then we'll, Catherine, oh, you going to join in? Please. Uh, and then can you email questions I have? Yep. Okay. Uh, Mark, uh, this may be a silly question, but would the yield in your fund go up as it gets bigger because of economies of scale? Yes. And Catherine, uh, this actually was a... <laughs> it says here, I'd love to hear your thoughts about re regarding re recaptured depreciation. We were unpleasantly surprised in the past regarding this issue, and I've always wondered if we could have handled it differently. Okay, are you ready there, Paul? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay, all right. Mr. Kramer, are you ready? You have an intro for Paul. Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to basically say he's the uh, uh, CEO of Lomico Technologies. All right, and... Um, Okay, let me do this because I've got just a quick oh, thing here. Okay, you ready, Kramer? All right. Ready, Paul? Yep, he, he says he's ready. Cool. Okay, so we're going to start right now. Welcome. You're listening to The Best of Investing on Talk 910. I'm your host, Edward Brown. I'm proud to have as my co host, Mark Hahn from Pacific Private Money, one of California's fastest growing mortgage investment firm, and Catherine Harris, CPA of Karate and Karate. Our phone number is 888-912-1190, and I use that number to answer the trivia questions for three, give, for three vacations given away during this show. And the vacations are not sponsored by the radio station, but by Lighthouse Resort and Marina, which is located one hour northeast of San Francisco. Those vacations are free. The re only request, a $75 cover the housekeeping expenses. Today's trivia theme is just miscellaneous trivia. I'm going to kind of just poke at you there and see if you can get, get it, all right? I uh, just want to mention also our friends at Bangkok Thai in San Rafael voted best 100 restaurants in the U.S. Visit Mali or Ben and tell them Edward sent you. They're right in San Rafael. They'll treat you right. And uh, every Thursday in uh, uh, downtown San Rafael, there's a farmer's market, and they're serving up dishes there on the farmer's market. So got got to go check them out. Uh, again, downtown 4th Street, Bangkok Thai. Now, today's special uh, guest is Paul Gill from Lamico Metals. And uh, Mark, you've got, got a couple of little tidbits there. Well, of course. And I've been uh, Paul, uh, welcome to the best of investing. Thanks, Mark. Okay, you're still there. That's great. Yeah. Glad we didn't lose you. So um, uh, Paul and I were talking a little bit uh, before we started the show, and, and 
Uh, Paul is CEO of Lamico Technologies, as Edward uh, introduced him, and uh, Lamico Technologies uh, is uh, helping to develop by investing in companies uh, who are who have a product known as graphene, graphene technology. And I know I've read about this, and it sounds pretty interesting. Paul, can you explain to us exactly what uh, graphene technology is and, and why our listeners uh, ought to be aware of this? Yeah, absolutely, Mark. Um, uh, what we're looking at with graphene is a material that is 200 times stronger than steel, thousand times more conductive than copper, is uh, flexible and heat resistant. So it's got these wonderful group of qualities. And what really got me interested is that there is more than 12,000 patents filed on graphene, and almost nobody heard about it yet. That's amazing. So what, what kind of applications are we talking about? In what way is graphene going to revolutionize uh, our way of life? Well, uh, let's think of it uh, as the new plastic. Um, uh, that's the best way I can look at it. There's so many applications. Let's start with uh, sports gear. There's the head tennis racket that came out with um, graphene. The Sherwood hockey stick came out with graphene. So, so it's fairly lightweight? Yeah, it's lightweight, it's strong, it's uh, carbon, yet it's a formation of carbon that is uh, super strong and flexible. So it can be used as a coating, it can be used as in electrical uh, connections, it can be used to filter water. So there's a number of really good uh, applications, and uh, some very big Fortune 500 companies are investing in it. So we said this is a new industry where it's going to be an upward trend for the next 25 years, we're in. So is this going to be, is this a material that, for example, might be used like in uh, uh, on airplanes or space flight, or, or is it more of a, a computers and superconductors? Yeah, all of the above. All of the um, above. It, because of the lightweight uh, uh, of, the, of the material, it can be combined with the plastic to make that plastic much more sturdy. Um, uh, it also has an application in Capacity. We've invested in a company called Graphene uh, Energy's uh, storage devices, which actually uses graphene as a uh, anode uh, along with lithium, and it can charge up very quickly and release that charge over time. So it's very good in car batteries, and uh, you know potentially it's uh, something that could uh, help uh, remove the range anxiety that electric vehicles have right now. So, so, Paul, your company, Labico Technologies, also invests in other startup companies that are uh, pursuing uh, graphene technology applications. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, we thought that uh, there's a number of really good ideas out there, and you have to pick out these patents that have, you have opportunities in. For big companies like Samsung and, and groups like that, you won't really get a good return on your investment. In with the Samsung and something like that. What we've done is invest in two material scientists out of uh, Calverton, New York, who have launched Graphene uh, 3D Labs. What they've done is created this material to be combining graphene and plastic, and he put this material into a 3D printer and print electronic devices out of it. So imagine the, the revolutionary aspect of that. That is amazing. I've read some articles about the, the exciting uh, 3D technology and all the stuff they're starting to print. So, so graphene technology also is uh, playing a part in, in, in that growth? Yeah, you're, you're combining a, a really revolutionary material that can be a lot of different things with a revolutionary delivery method and manufacturing method that uh, removes any um, you know, waste materials from the, the actual manufacturing of the product. You're ending up with uh, exactly what you want, and you can design it in a different way than just kind of using regular manufacturing methods. So it's a real revolution. I think uh, you know this is where you look at good ideas and you, you invest in them, and that's what we've done. Is we've taken foot forward and invested in them, um, and uh, we've done really well. Graphene 3D launched at 25 uh, cents. And uh, is now trading above fifty. From twenty-five cents to fifty. Now that's a little bit of a. Hey, not fifty cents. <laughs> it's been around for about a year. 
I actually have a question. Um, is the material something that can be, uh, does it have a, is it like oil where there's going, it's going to be depleted over time or is this something that's like, like you said, you give the example of plastic that can be produced over and over again? Yeah, it, it, it's a good question. Um, graphene is made out of carbon, essentially. So you have a number of different um, materials that you can uh, use as a base product. We're using graphite from the ground is generally you know, known as pencil lead or coal. What you have to do is have very high quality graphite that can be converted easily into graphene cost effectively. And that's the key to any manufacturing situation is you can do it cost effectively. And that's why the material scientists have patents on that conversion technology. And that's why we're so interested in working with them over and over again. And With, with this 3D technology and this graphene, can I clone myself in it? <laughs> well, they have actually uh, printed kidneys and liver and uh, a wow. number of internal organs. So there's some possibilities there. There was a very good article on um, bone, uh, creating bone material. Wow. So there is a potential out there in the future. Uh, I don't know if you can control uh, uh, bone uh, your, your mind or brain. Your brain. Yeah. <laughs> Let me ask you, how close is it to like to titanium? Um, it, it's not at all like titanium, uh, especially because it's got that flexibility factor to it. Okay. The, the way the um, carbon atoms join are in a hexagon formation. It's almost like a chicken wire formation in which it, and you layer that up. And so the bonds are very flexible, unlike diamond, which is tetrahedral, it's very rigid. Um, you have this flexibility, so it's not as hard as titanium, but it's as strong. And so when you're mining it into polymers or using it with other materials, it creates that uh, either a hardness or a um, liability, depending on which material you combine it with, which makes it so amazing uh, to work with. So, Paul, I'm an investor, and I'm interested in, in you know, always uh, looking at opportunities that uh, are, are on the growth curve here. And so, if I wanted to in, learn more about investing in graphene-related technologies, where would I go? Well, uh, we just uh, uh, launched our company, Lumico Technologies, and uh, we've got um, information that we're pushing out as much as possible. We're um, related, 100% uh, owned by Lumico Metal. I'm also the CEO of, which trades under the symbol LMRNF on the OTC spec. And in Canada, it trades under the symbol LMR under the center exchange. So we're one method in which to engage in these ideas. Graphene 3D Lab uh, is another company that's public, that's a 3D printing uh, concept. That trades under the symbol GTHDF and means. Um, I think a, a you know a wonderful growth story that's going to keep going. They just added uh, revenue, and so we're we're uh, uh, four million shares into it right now, uh, and we think it's just going to have a growth uh, cycle that's just unbelievable. Great. Give us your uh, website, Paul. So Paul, we're talking to Paul Gill of Lomico Technologies and Lomico Metals, talking about uh, an exciting new technology that uh, you're probably going to be hearing a lot more about the coming years, and that is graphene. And so where do, uh, what, which, what website can uh, can we go to for more information, Paul? Yeah, our main website for Lomico is lomico.com, lomico.com. We'll soon be launching lomicotechnologies.com, and in conjunction with that, we're actually launching new products fairly soon on Kickstarter, so we'll have a, a real interesting PR side of our uh, our company that will get a lot of exposure. So we're asking people to keep, a, keep an eye on what we're doing. I engage with us on our various uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, and um, and on our website. And keep, keep an eye on us. We're going to keep informed on, uh, on a number of different items that are coming up that are going to be really interesting. All right, that's graphene uh, technology coming up. Uh, the company name is Lomico, L-O-M-I-K-O.com. For more information, go visit their website. Thank you very much, Paul, for uh, joining us on The Best of Investing. 
Thanks very much. All right. Bye-bye. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, I've stuff. read about that before, and it's going to be like the new uh, wonder material in upcoming. It's going to replace plastic or do something. Like that. Yeah. It's super strong, super strong, lightweight, light. flexible. Little bit of everything. Huh? Yeah, I love tech. Okay, <laughs> I can tell. Okay, here's our uh, first trivia question. We're going to a commercial break right now. The original Monopoly game is based on what American city? The first caller with the correct answer is going to win a free three day, two night stay at the Lighthouse Resort. Call 888 912 1190. That's 888 912 1190 to answer this question. The original Monopoly game is based on what American city? All right, stay with us. You're listening to The Best of Investing. We will be right back. How do you guys run? I I got to hold them. Uh, some well, you, you, don't, PR uh, you go through, you've been, you get speakers through like an agency, right? Uh, yeah, sometimes it's, it's searching uh, it's around kind of hit or miss. Yeah. yeah, sometimes there's an agency. Says, oh, I got some guy who wants to you know, talk about something. Sure. Oh. No. And it's going to be and the hard part is you just don't know whether they're going to come across strong or whether the topic that their uh, company is about is one that's going to be interesting. Well, well, so. uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's pretty wild. Really hard, I mean, yeah. Is it the real thing at the end of the day? Apparently, because you can make these plastic guns. Well, I've, I've actually yeah, I've read, because I, I subscribe to a bunch of tech magazines, and I've read, I've read like articles about graph beam and this new technology that's coming out that's going to like yeah. be absolutely uh, this guy, this guy was good. I remember one guy we, we had on, which is just the, the guy had written a, a, a funny book about like guys turning you know midlife crisis, and I mean, oh, okay, this will be kind of fun, funny, right? And and his whole his the name of his book was like what like the funny part about midlife crisis or something like that, right? Mm-hmm. So we get him on the air, and my first question is so so what's so funny about midlife crisis? He goes, well, there's nothing funny about it. And I go. But the name of your book is, you know, and suddenly it's like, this I guy's like really serious. And it's the like, book. you know, this is a, this is a disaster here. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh but it, it was definitely interesting to come on. Um, that was good, though. Uh, I'm writing it down. No, I'm shuffling. I'm sorry. I, it was, you look cold. <laughs> I'm usually running so cold. I'm oh. so warm outside. I know. What was the name of the Lomico? L O M I K O. All right. Um, you guys have some good stuff? Hell yes. Oh, Mom was back to school. You're back to school. Student loans, guys. Be oh. careful. And then, if you, have you guys heard of dorm insurance? Dorm insurance, no. Is it like renter's insurance? There's a good one. Oh, well, that's good. As, good. as, as parents go back to school, right, here at Go ahead. Fire away with what you got there. Yeah. Okay. Um, the, we have a bigger clock this time because. The gill thing ended, and so they won't let us use the. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. We have more time. All right. Good. Bigger clock. I like Bigger clock. <clears throat> Are you ready? It's ready. Like yeah. like like rolling. Thing over. I like your hair down, by the way. Thank you. Don't you like it, Mr. Kramer? Yes, I do. Okay. It's very nice. Very good. Okay. Here we go. Welcome back to the Best of Investing. I'm Edward Graham, your host, along with Mark Hoff and Catherine Aaron. Uh, let's see. Well, that was kind of interesting that uh, about Momiko technology. Talking about the scene. It's graphene. amazing what's out there in this world. Very cool. Yeah. People can get on the ground floor and that's baby. Okay, uh, here was our first trivia question. Just miscellaneous trivia here. The original Monopoly game is based on what American city? Uh, New York, right? I think we were Panthers because it's boardwalk. Well, close. Chicago. Close. Close. Atlantic City. Ah. Uh, okay, I mean, that's, you know. Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 There we go. Okay. The only thing I could think of was on the game. Oh, well, exactly. Park Park there's Bard, Boardwalk and Park Place and all that in, in Atlantic City, yeah. New Jersey. Uh, so, Catherine, you've got some interesting things now that we're back in school again. Everyone should, well, I shouldn't say that. Almost everybody should be back in school. Uh, mm-hmm. There's a couple people who their children start college late in September, but I mm-hmm. came across this article and I thought for my theme, I like themes, uh, is back to school college edition. Mm-hmm. So this article talks about, these are students asking the education department to discharge college debt. Uh, and it, this one has to be specifically about the, um, the for-profit, the name of the company. Oh, the Corinthian Colleges. This is the, the for-profit college that went into bankruptcy and uh, students are now able to 
say that they were defrauded and try to get their student loan forgiven. Uh, is this one of those companies or colleges that sound like uh, a real college, but they don't really exist? Exactly. Or they and they promote the one student like who got Columbia a great Pacific job. Columbia University. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and, and I I just kind of go back to student loans and student loans and hearing the horror stories. I always like to kind of remind as you go into college, as you try, as you are entering the first year and learning everything about the school and understand the financial aid offer that is provided to you and potentially your parents and how difficult it can be to get that debt forgiven, get that debt discharged, et cetera. So it's kind of just a word to the wise uh, for for parents and children as they go into college, especially after this first year, as you go in, learn about it, but realize that when you take out a loan and it's for you think it's for all the great things that you can pay for your uh, for the loan, excuse me, for the for the tuition, but the room and board. Then you start taking out for your late nights and your dinners and yeah. <laughs> your your traveling uh, adventures. Think about how much it's going to cost when you go to repay it, and really try to have a good understanding of those loans when you go into them, because a lot of them have compounding interest nowadays. Yeah. Uh, it used to be that they would just they the federal government would subsidize your interest while you were in school. That's not necessarily anymore yeah. very little now well when, when I, I remember uh, going to college uh, at the time interest rates in general were about 20 percent because oh. this was Carter years right mm -hmm. and uh, I decided to take out a $2,500 student loan and the way they did it was it was 3 percent interest but you didn't get charged any interest until you eventually graduate and then it started oh my god I'm still having a hard time paying off that 2500 but anyway um, from 1982. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I paid my student loans in full. Um, very good. Yeah, very good. Um, and some of them are a steal. There, there are a few like that every now and then. But especially those private loans, they, they, yeah. they oftentimes aren't the best. Um, don't give you the best terms, but they do offer a product. They're the, it's, a, it's a way to get into school. Sometimes you have to do it. Correct. And I get, and, but just as you do that, make that choice is understand what you're getting yourself yeah. into. Because oftentimes they'll make that decision because they're going to select the, the school, uh, um, an elite school, one of the top 10. And gotcha. I want them to pick, uh, maybe sometimes it's better to go to a school that's um, lower tier, maybe not a division one, knowing that, hey, let's look at the Community same. college. I'm all about community college. Listen, some community colleges are really good. You know, Santa Rosa, JC is good. Mm -hmm. College of Marin, you know, fantastic. Like and a lot of them yeah. feed right into the the UC yeah. system. And guess what? Your degree comes from the UC, and that's what uh, employers exactly. Yeah. Now, the only downside is, in general, your kids are staying with you rather than going well. off. So <laughs> that's that's. Yeah, well, hey, you couldn't have them go to another JC, but and the tuition will be lower. But then you do have to pay for their, their for their room and board. Exactly. Go. Which going on to what you were going to talk about next, dorm insurance. I have you two heard of this? Yeah, I've heard of renters insurance. I have no, this. Dorm insurance. I What's came that? across it twice. Again, when you hear about something once, you go scratch your head. You hear about it twice, you say, okay, hold on, what is this? Well, is there is there a, a waiver for beer pong I insurance? <laughs> Uh, you know. I wonder what's the you know, I'd be curious. So there's this new. I, I'm assuming it's a relatively new type of insurance that's out there, yeah. um, and it's dorm insurance, which might be really. Good. I can appreciate that the need for it nowadays with the cost of a computer. I'm kind of um, curious if it costs a cell phone, uh, covers the cost of a, of a cell phone. Well, and it can be all innocent. You know, you, you just have a drink. You know, and you sure. spill it on it. Yes, but I can also appreciate the the exceptions to the yeah. rules that are not going to be covered by the insurance. Sure. So for for parents out there who have their kids going off to to college, I, you may want to consider dorm insurance or look it up. I thought it was very interesting. Well, there's very few things that aren't insurable if you're willing to pay a premium. That's a good point. You know, those movie stars who uh, who uh, insure various body parts. Betty Grable for their legs. Yeah, that's true. There you go. Yeah. Um, so I wonder how much it costs. You know, and again, like you said, to insure your legs. No, no. <laughs> yeah, I don't nobody nobody wants to insure my legs. <laughs> <laughs> the right too looks hairy. much better. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, dorm insurance. Okay. I'm going to look that one up. Uh, what else have you got for us? So, well, you know, what's new for me this week at the at Pacific Private Money is that, you know, we just had uh, another kind of wild week last week and, and a little bit more of a scare on, uh, on Monday and a little Stock market, stock market, down not, not your company, but no, 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 stock no, market. Just the wild, you know, just the stock market in general has is, is just been kind of crazy, and people are wondering, well, what's going on? So, 
you know, the phone at Pacific Private Money has been kind of ringing off the hook yep. from people wanting uh, to know more information about alternative investments. And they've heard the show. We've been doing the show now. This is, in fact, this is the five good enough five years. Yeah, we just, uh, the month of August was our five year anniversary. And we've been talking about uh, alternative investments like uh, trustee uh, investing, uh, also known as mortgage investing. And then the last couple of years, we've been talking about uh, the fund that uh, we launched at Pacific Private Money, which we call the uh, uh, Pacific Private Money. Fun. Of course, that was very creative. There was more meetings for it. Right, exactly. So, in the Pacific Private Money Fund, uh, we just made our um, our August distribution, and it was at an annualized rate of uh, eight point five one percent. So, for the year, we're just uh, a healthy tick over eight percent in our distributions, and it's been very consistent. We and we generally generate uh, those 8% returns for our investors basically by making short-term real estate loans. We've been talking about the types of loans that we make and I'll, uh, I've got a couple of deals I'll, I'll be talking about the types of loans we do uh, later on in the show. Um, but you know whenever the stock market does what it's done the last couple yeah. of weeks and you know in fact we've been talking about I mean I, I brought up an article months ago uh, in, in Forbes uh, no less that talked about don't expect uh, to see uh, a lot of growth in the stock market uh, oh, once yeah. it hit uh, the 16, 17,000 um, because uh, they just don't see, uh, based on current valuations, they don't see a whole lot of uh, upside potential after what we've already had in the last uh, five, six years. We, we've seen a lot of growth and now we're looking at maybe not so much growth. And so people are concerned and they want to know, okay, well, what, what can I put my money into that's actually going to generate a return? And the type of returns you can get through mortgage investing, you know, by investing in uh, real estate-backed uh, notes uh, secured by uh, recorded mortgages, or also known as deeds of trust in California, you know, those are some of the uh, been providing, you know, since 2008, some of the most consistent and healthiest returns with very, very low risk factors. Now that yeah. uh, you know, the real estate market has been, been very, very strong over all these years, so. A lot of new inquiries, a lot of new investors into our fund, and, and so you know, for people who are looking for investment alternatives to the stock market and are looking for ways to boost the yield that they earn on their savings and IRA accounts, it's uh, it's uh, suitable for uh, IRA money. Yeah, I'll, I'll bet you get a lot of calls too from people not just asking about, hey, you know, stock market's gone crazy. I, I'm looking at alternate investments. I'll bet you get some questions from people who are wondering, well, if the market's going crazy, how does that affect your fund? Well, that's that's exactly right, and the, and the fact of it is, is you know, the real estate market and the stock market and equities markets uh, obviously are two separate, um, two step separate areas of the economy, but they're not completely unrelated. I mean, everything really at the end of the day is about perceptions. Uh, what we do know about the real estate market, as opposed to the equities markets, is that the real estate market tends to move much slower. We're yeah. talking about a real asset, a home. A of real estate, a commercial building, uh, those valuations do fluctuate. They do go up and they do go down, as we know, as uh, we had a you know the, the, the so-called real estate market crash between 2007 and 2009, where it did go down. But it was um, it, you know it's it's a, it moves a lot slower, and the valuations don't uh, tend to fluctuate anywhere near as much as stock prices do and, and equities do. And the nice thing about when you, for example, invest in um, a mortgage-backed uh, security like a mortgageable fund or a trustee is that um, you're normally not uh, uh, lending out that that note that secured note is normally not equal to 100 percent of the value of the property it's not usually not equal to the market value it's usually equal to a conservative percentage of the market value so, so even if the market value drops right well, unless it drops by 80 percent or something ridiculous right, it, right. Like in, it, in general yeah. it, it, it rarely affects um, Security and, and the returns uh, of, of a note of a well, secured note. Well, here's the other thing: is that sometimes, even if it if the market value drops below the value of the mortgage, a lot, of times, people, a lot of times people still pay their mortgage. Well, people because still they're still waiting yeah. for the market to go up. Well, they that's automatically. I mean, yes, I mean, they have equity in the game. Well, well even if they don't, I mean, like, like if it goes underwater, sometimes they just kind of wait it out. Yeah. They don't automatically just get the keys handed to you. Right. So companies like ours, like Pacific Private Money, have really thrived uh, anytime the stock market is uh, gone a little hinky. Yeah. We tend to get a lot of phone calls from people going, hmm, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of pulling some money out of the market, and I've been you know, hearing about uh, 
your company uh, on the radio. Uh, we do not only this radio show, but we do radio ads periodically on on, uh, on the nine ten, and uh, we are also in the newspaper and elsewhere. So you know, some people do, and by, and by referral. I mean, we've got over two hundred fifty investors right now uh, who are uh, who are loving the returns yeah. they make Very investing in them. Well, yeah, because the, the principal's not fluctuating, and they're getting a, right. a, you're getting a decent monthly return. So yeah. Wow. Can I ask yeah. uh, with the upcoming? Federal Reserve uh, meeting. What one? I guess one of my questions for both of you was, what do you guys predict? And two, if there is an increase in interest rates, no, does that have any type of impact on what you can provide as one to your investors and two to the people you to the U.S. Well, again, there's always from? an impact. It's just, is it a significant impact? And so, as I mentioned earlier, it's not like there's no correlation between uh, wildly gyrating stock prices and real estate because if people all of a sudden become uh, or lose their shirt on a stock, uh, they're not they're suddenly not an all cash buyer for real estate. So in general, let's just say there was a tech uh, stock market uh, uh, correction, major one. Uh, right now, many, many, many of the cash buyers in the Bay Area real estate market are people who have generated gobs of money through their tech uh, um, portfolios. So those guys uh, very likely would you know, get very conservative, maybe sit on the sideline, maybe um, uh, avoid or, or prolong that uh, decision to buy a house. So you, you might see suddenly um, pressure on the real estate market where we start to go from what's now clearly a seller's market to maybe a buyer's yeah. market. Wouldn't that be interesting to see that happen again? <laughs> and it will happen again. But so, so yeah, so when interest rates go up, and I personally don't think, and I guess we'll, yeah, we'll find out in a couple of days, I don't think in the September meeting, I don't believe they're going to raise interest rates and they're going to keep the same. But they are going to start increasing rates. And how is that going to impact the type of financing that uh, companies like Pacific Private Money uh, engage in? And so at Pacific Private Money, we make private money loans, privately funded loans, also known as hard money loans, and the rates are... Uh, much higher than bank financing. Right now, they're on average 10%. So if you come to us for generally a short-term bridge loan, we'll, we'll make that loan to you uh, very quickly and easily with no fuss or muss. So that it's going to you know, cost you to pay 10% and, and some fees, uh, as opposed to a bank loan that you can still get at 4% uh, and, and uh, fairly low fees. Um, but uh, uh, that spread right now is actually pretty high. You know, you're talking about you know, between 4 and 10, that's a six-point spread. Uh, historically, that's been closer to five or four. So I think uh, I think there's a little bit of room for um, interest rates to go up, for more, for conventional mortgage rates to go up. That will not immediately impact uh, the private money sector. But uh, ultimately, you know, once if we if we see prime again, or when we see prime again at say six or seven or eight percent, you can probably add about four or five percentage points to that. And that's going to be the kind of money we're going to be selling um, uh, privately. And so I I still think there's going to be a strong demand for it. Because and for those who, people out there who are wondering what to do with their money after taking it out of the stock market, uh, how do they get a hold of you? Absolutely. Well, it's uh, pretty easy to get a hold of us. We're at PacificPrivateMoney.com. Uh, we have a very transparent website. It's got our uh, direct line phone numbers, our faces, our email addresses. We're a very transparent company. We like it that way. So for as much information as you would like to know about us, uh, between a Google search and our website, you can uh, find a lot, of, uh, a lot about us and, and read the uh, Read the testimonials of the uh, literally dozens and dozens of clients uh, just this year alone. We've, uh, we've uh, written some pretty glowing reviews about their experience with our company. Very good. Okay, we're going to cut to our second commercial break here. The uh, theme is just miscellaneous trivia. Before we do, though, um, since Mark, we've been doing this for five years, I can ask you a personal question. Does this microphone make me look fat? Give me, give, me an honest, give me an honest answer. I know you were patting on your belly a little bit earlier. Yeah, I know. I, 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 I look at some of the pictures that I were patting five years ago. I was a lot thinner. <laughs> I had a little bit more hair. Happens to the best of us. Of course. Okay. Who started their singing careers as Caesar and Cleo, but only got their big break after they started using their real names? The first caller with the correct answer is going to win a free three-day, two-night stay at the Lighthouse Resort. Call 888-912-1190 to answer that question. And stay with us, the best of investing. We'll be right back. For a long segment. Okay. Well, I went off on a, okay. on a rant there, yeah, so. Okay. Fortunately, we don't, have, we don't have hard breaks, which yeah. is good, except that we didn't do the last one. You should do the, do, do the email for Catherine. Okay. Like her, uh, yeah. All right. That, that's what's hard about the uh, yeah. sports that's one. We have yeah. five yeah. hard breaks. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then it's like, you can get people oh. on the phone. I've talked to these sports athletes, and i got to cut them off. 
JT Snow, just hold on a second. Yeah. I'm actually going. Pretty well. The, our ratings are going up. So I can't be too Imagine that. Yeah. And that's unfortunately without without Bruce, or without uh, Vern. Yeah, they, which is sad. Uh, they banned him. Yeah, what happened? Well, Vern Glenn from Channel 5 yeah. was our co host. Yeah. And uh, then Channel 5, KPIX, kind of goes, wait a minute, Vern. Can't be on a on a competing show, really. We're competing with KPIX, on, oh, and, no. and so they they won't let them do it anymore. Oh. You get this. Wait. 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 That's, that's what it is. Yeah, I'm getting the exercise in. Is that when did you say, what the year? Yeah, well, yeah, so July of last summer I started doing two day, two one hour sessions a week, but they're just so cool. I mean, it's just like the rough, it's the hardest hour of my week is those two. Yeah. Those, yeah. Like, and I'll do that the show, but I'll race up there five yeah, thirty, six thirty. Yeah. Yeah. I know, that's what I'm taking that with me. That. It's just like, I have a complete respect. I'm like, I'm You'll usually, get a little pre exercise at this day. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I know, for me, it's, uh, it's more, it's just the eating part, because I'm getting the exercise. Should you give her the yeah, question? Let me give her the one. She will uh, All right, ready? expound. I'll try. Expound, expand, promote. Mm. There you go. All right. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Best of Investing. I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Mark Hoff and Catherine Harris. When we cut to the second commercial break, we ask this trivia question. Who started their singing careers as Caesar and Cleo, but only got their big break, big break after they started using the real names? Would that be the captain and toenail? I mean, toenail. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I, I had a thing for her back in 1975. She um, was cute. Oh, my God. That's actually a name of... Okay. Captain, right. and, captain and Toenail. I was yeah. going to go with Cher. And yes, his name. Sonny and Cher. Oh, good job. Oh, wow. Oh, that was yes. great. Very good. Well, one quick thing. Pull that we're, one out. We're, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, okay, now we're going to... Uh, ask you a quick email question that we received from a listener earlier this week. But before we do, got to say that next week we are going to have a special trivia contest uh, for uh, the winner is going to get a Burj on the Vineyard located in Cloverdale, uh, situated at the confluence of three of California's greatest wine growing regions. A Burj on the Vineyard is the perfect starting point to discover the charms of Sonoma and Mendocino counties. Check them out at www.sonomabedbreakfastinwinecountry.com. Oh, my God. That's one more time. That's a good one. Okay. www.sonomabedbreakfastinwinecountry.com. Right. Or you can just call them at 707-894-5956. It looks like a very relaxing bed and breakfast uh, place to enjoy the wine country. Okay. It's in. It's I-N, not I-N-N. Um, First, no, 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 bed, it's bed, 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 breakfast, because it's a bed and breakfast in, so there are two ends. Okay, yeah. then it starts Thank you the for second asking. time actually makes it sound like in, wine, Yeah, country. yeah, no, 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 it's a yeah. bed, breakfast in. Okay, okay. Uh, so we received an email from you, Catherine. It says, I'd love to hear your thoughts about, uh, regarding recapture depreciation. We were unpleasantly surprised. Uh, in the past regarding this issue, and I've always wondered if we could have handled it differently. Good question. Yeah. Um, and I'm sorry to hear that you were surprised. Uh, yeah. My name is Catherine Harris. I'm with Karate and Cross CPA, so we're a local CPA, full service CPA firm in Marshall Landing. Um, and I, I, oftentimes with my answers, it's always it depends, because yeah. um, it really comes down to the personal belief of of the individual. Who are filing? Who are going to be filing the return? Um, what what this is recapture is when it, usually it's for rental properties, but it can also be done on your primary residence um, if you use it for if that's your office. Okay. So so it can have an application in there. But generally speaking, it's on rental property where you get to depreciate the asset over a period of about thirty to forty years. Uh, and what happens is that reduces, I'm trying to be very technical, reduces the basis of the property so that when you go to sell it, what you thought was, oh, I bought it for half of a million, but you may have depreciated it to 300000 mm -hmm. that 
your base is in the property of 300,000. So whatever you sold it for, the difference between what you sold it for and that 300,000, that will be your gain, not the 500 that you originally sold it. Yeah, because it. you got you got to deduct oh, the 200,000 yes, on your tax return. Yes, you in theory got yeah, to, to deduct the 200,000 of costs. Mm -hmm. um, and some of that cost gets to be recaptured uh, at not, which is sometimes, it depends, can be a, at a benefit to you at a rate of 25%. If you're a, an individual or a, a um, husband, wife, or spouse who ha are in a high income tax bracket, you should take that opportunity to do, to, to utilize this recapture because generally speaking, you're actually paying ordinary taxes at a rate higher than 25%. Uh, so though you have a recapture at the end of, at the time you sell your rental property or potential home, uh, and you're paying taxes at 25%, you were able to save taxes at a higher rate. Exactly, yeah, you're depreciating it uh, as ordinary. At ordinary, correct. Yeah. Now, sometimes you may be at a really low tax bracket and your ordinary rate was below 25%. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. But generally speaking, people who have that usually have one or two rental properties and usually have an income that usually is at the 25 or above rate. Well, and so, so if you're depreciating real estate, like rental real estate, is it true that the real answer to avoiding those taxes is when you sell it to engage in what's called a 1031 tax deferred exchange and buy another property? Exactly, there's definitely that option available um, for individuals too. And they, I, I'm sorry to have heard that recently with somebody who I've worked with as a realtor and they did not, the realtor did not know that they were, that they, they had just had basis. that low basis, just weren't planning for it. And they, no, a lot of people just can't assume, you can't make assumptions. So if you're interested in selling your rental property, that is a great avenue to think, to consider. Uh, but you definitely need to know, your, your real estate agent needs to know that because you have a time frame in which you need to make that acquisition, the, your replacement asset. And it's pretty, it has to be like kind. You can't go and replace. Um, with a boat. With a boat. With a boat. Yes. Yeah. Well, in, 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 I rent the boat out though. Yeah, no, unfortunately it's not a boat. Not the so really the point of it is that they should really be contacting uh, Catherine, someone like you, a, a knowledgeable CPA, if they're going to, if they're considering selling any type of uh, business or investment related asset that they may have depreciated or done amortization, that's another form of, of, of writing off uh, part of the value. It's great on your taxes. I mean, I love filing <laughs> tax returns with lots of depreciation yeah, exactly. and amortization, but then when you go to sell those assets, that recapture can be it can. Uh, really expensive and you absolutely need to, uh, to meet with your CPA and, and find out about that before you put it on. Exactly. So yes, and you. be proactive. Uh, you can reach me at 415-461-8500 and exactly that. You've got to be proactive yeah. going in and kind of going out. And sometimes, and it's being proactive, I'm going to say two to three years ahead of time. Yeah. You've got to really have a more, you have to be, for anyone to have good tax strategy, you have to be working with somebody for at least two to three years. You can't make a change or make a decision on December 30th. Thinking yeah, that it's going to be great, you know, you can't, especially for that. But just in general, it, it usually take for you to have a really good cost benefit uh, for working with the CPA and actually getting some tax savings and and doing the appropriate strategies. Do, do you know in the old days you used to do the recapture, not an ordinary? I mean, it was oh, a great, yeah. it was a great deal. You could write it off on ordinary, but then when you had to recapture, it was all uh, considered capital gains. Oh, Better tax rates. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. Yes. Right. But still, people aren't aren't sometimes don't realize they don't realize they just they understood depreciation and that reduced what I have to pay taxes on, but they don't realize that their basis has gone down. So when they sell, they're like, "Well, I bought it for half yeah. a million. I know, but the, but the reality is, if you think about it, if, you know, if you get all these yeah. tax write offs because of it, then it's like, well, why wouldn't you have to yes. pay some of that back if you get a gain? Yeah, and you one can more defer. thing. And again, one more thing to note, which is why you need to work with someone like Catherine, is is that. There are different tax rates that to apply to different forms of income. So recapture is a form of income where they're recapturing the depreciation or amortization you're going to take on that asset. But like Catherine said, if it's taxed at a lower rate than ordinary income, you're you may still be better off at the end. Well, plus you guys can do an analysis to figure out the allocation of a sales price if there's more than one type of asset involved. Oh yeah, where you, know, you can really get the benefit of the capital. And happy to do a type of a type of planning for. And this is the time of year. That was something else with 
Or out of September, you've got a good sense of where you've been and what you've got oh, left yeah. for the year. So pick up the phone. Good. Okay, we're going to cut to our second portion break. When we come back, we've got a question from Mark that has to do with yield and economies of scale. Oh, it's a, it'll be, it's a fun time in the old town tonight. Okay, so here is our second commercial. Uh, no, we already asked the second one. So this is the third, third one here. Third commercial break. All right, you ready? You're going to have to put your thinking caps on for this one, audience. What is the value of the Roman numeral XCIX? Don't Get your pen, pen and paper on this one. All right, the first caller was correct. I'll repeat it again. The first caller with the correct answer will win the free three day, two night stay at the Lighthouse Resort. Uh, call 888-912-1190 to answer this question. What is the value of the Roman numeral XCIX? All right, stay with us. You're listening to The Best of Investing. Don't touch that dial. You gotta find out what the answer is. asked on a trivia question on the boat. I got this one right. You're paying attention. Yeah, I'm thinking, wow. Well, I was sort of right. Oh, I want to include Love the boat. Love boat. Oh, yes, that's <laughs> Love boat. Exciting and new. Like, little crib in the bay. Oh, you know, it's funny. My, my brother just got married. And uh, yeah, he's 60 years old. Married a 45 year old now. Oh, my goodness. Um, but he's a young, he's a young, he's a young 60. Michael got married. Yeah. So he gets, the first time? Actually, it's second. Um, yeah, yeah. But it's uh, no, so he gets, gets married on um, the Princess Cruise that is coming out of San Francisco, from dock in San Francisco, because they're going to go on the cruise afterwards. Kind of a neat way to do it. So we get to we go on the ship, and as we're walking down, our, the, their maids are doing their beds and stuff, and it is a Princess Cruise, right? Almost all the TVs were turned on, and on is the love boat. <laughs> it's like they must play that 24 <laughs> 7. Oh, that was pretty funny. I remember that show. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. True. Number three is always the hardest one. Number two. I just corrected what I thought my answer is. So ah. Answer. Well, I'll ask you what you did have and what you changed. I got show. the nine at the end. That's all I think I got. X before C, C is 100, isn't it? And X before other B is a little more easy. X before C, except after E. <laughs> a and waiver and wait. Let's look at this. Let's see what we got here. Oh, is it the last uh, segment? Or? Yeah. What's that got here? What have we got here? How's the home improvement going? You did the yeah. best five years of uh, Mr. Gill. Yeah. All right. So, so your help. Your help. Uh, well, hopefully we'll win another first. Yay! Well, good. Yeah. All right. Sorry, Matthew. You well aware of that. Well, hopefully I did this right. Because if I didn't, half the show is going to get. Uh, <laughs> How much do you think we have? How much time? Ten minutes and fifty seconds. Ten fifty? Yeah. Which is bad. We can get to audio or entertainment. Oh, well, I've got deal the week. Also, we got the questions to answer. Of course, we'll move, go right into deal of the week and then we'll talk. Okay, here we go. Welcome back to the Best of Investing. Last time for today, I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Mark Hahn and Catherine Harris. Third trivia question What is the what is the value of the Roman numeral XCIX? Um, I'm guessing it's 99. That is correct. Uh, Very good. Good job. Because X before C is 100, X before would make it 90, and then IX is 9. That's right. Except for when it sounds like A, a neighbor in a way. Okay. All right. So we promised the audience here we're going to ask you a very interesting question. All right. Here it is. This may be a silly question, but wouldn't the yield on your fund go up as it gets bigger because of economy of scale? So that is a mortgage pool fund question, and uh, for if you've been listening uh, to the show for the last uh, 45 minutes, we're, uh, my name is Mark Hawk, I'm the president of Pacific Private Money, and one of our investment vehicles uh, that we um, uh, have available for our clients, our 250 plus clients who like to invest in mortgage-backed investments for 8% and higher yields, uh, one of the options we have is, uh, is a more passive investment strategy, which works actually really well for most people who aren't uh, uh, 
experienced real estate investors or experienced in note investing, and that is our mortgage pool fund at Civic Heart of Hunter Fund. Again, paying a little bit more than 8% uh, um, on a regular basis, and has been doing so uh, since uh, early 2013. And so the fund is growing. Uh, in fact, uh, we we're just talking about how I got a whole bunch of calls uh, this past uh, couple of weeks, uh, people inquiring about how the fund's doing and how, how is the loan portfolio and you know what's happening in real estate and what do we think is in store. And of course, I'm very, very bullish on uh, the real estate market. I don't see any, uh, I, I see some hint of clouds on the horizon, but I certainly don't think the storm clouds are brewing yet. I think we'll get plenty of notice uh, and, and when that uh, approaches. I still think there's uh, great opportunities in real estate and, and certainly lending on real estate conservatively. So um, that's what uh, we do at uh, Pacific Heart of the Hunter Fund. We make uh, short-term loans to people who need bridge financing or fix and flip financing or other types of loans that banks today are generally not making. That's, that's our niche product. So the question is, is um, uh, will, a, will the yield on the Pacific Heart of the Hunter Fund potentially increase uh, over time as the fund gets larger due to economies of scale. So um, the answer is yes, it can. Now it, it also depends on how the portfolio changes. You know, if we start making uh, lower interest rate loans, if we decide, well, you know, at ten, you know, ten percent, maybe you know, you know nine percent loans. Yeah, but that's that, that's not, yeah, loans. but that's that's a different kind of question, though. That I mean, is, this yeah. would be more, I guess, with fixed Which cost. That. Right. Okay. So, no so right. So, no. Yeah, if exactly. nothing else changes in the portfolio of loans we make, yes, over time, um, because the, the, there are certain fixed costs or, or semi-variable. I guess is a more specific term. So, as the fund grows, there's not a direct proportional increase in the amount of uh, money it takes to file a tax return, or to pay the annual LLC fee, or to um, accrue for uh, for lo for potential loan losses. Which, uh, which many funds do, or to pay for the audit costs. It's just those, those, uh, those costs are not necessarily directly proportional to the size of the fund. So as the fund grows larger, yes, in fact, we expect to see uh, a several basis point increase over time uh, on a quarter uh, by quarter and even year by year basis. In fact, we're starting to see that already. In once, the yield. Once we, in the yield. Once we went over uh, 10 million in size, uh, we're actually starting to see that effect already occur in our Good. fund because it's usually the people who are the charter investors in a fund when the fund is only a few million in size rather than, a, than, than 10 million or higher in size. Those are the ones oftentimes that uh, we'll see a little bit of yield drag uh, as a result of expenses that are um, higher in proportion uh, than normal uh, fund that's say a 20 or 30 or even 50 million in size. So, so that was a good question. That's a very sharp uh, listener. And yes, in fact, you can, uh, we, we are looking forward to our fund uh, growing in size. We certainly have the capacity for a much larger fund. Uh, we'll probably end up doing um, 75 to 80 million in uh, loan originations this year. And, uh, and we can certainly accommodate the fund size, uh, much larger than its current size, to, to accommodate those abnormal demands. So it's, uh, it's a good, it's a good and industry. You said it. Starting to already some of your we're already starting to. I'm seeing that happen on a, on a month by month basis yeah. right now. We're starting to see that that, that occur. So, so uh, tell us a little bit of deal of the week. We haven't talked about any specific deals. What do you got? Well, so we had, um, and this is you know, this again is is not that atypical. It's uh, uh, you get a call from um, a a couple who want to buy a home. They've got good FICO and good income, um, but they have a seasoning issue with respect to their credit. And usually when you hear the word seasoning, uh, most people think, you know, when you hear it from your mortgage broker, what it typically means is, well, your money hasn't been in a savings account long enough, or yeah, you know, exactly. they want to see your, your down payment uh, over the course of many, many months in your checking account. When it comes to credit seasoning, this particular couple um, were several months shy of a three-year anniversary from a short sale on their credit. So many banks will not make a conventional loan to you uh, until three years have passed on the short sale or foreclosure. So, so they've got a seasoning issue. That was number one. And number two, they had 25% down, which for a bank is fine, but for private money loans, uh, that's actually a little bit low. We usually like to see 30% minimum, and some companies won't even go higher than 65%. They want a 35% minimum down payment. So 25% uh, down instead of normal 30, and uh, um, 
But everything else about them we liked from a planet money standpoint. We liked that they had uh, pretty darn good FICOs, uh, low 700s and levels like that. The way we were able to do the loan for them is they um, owned another piece of property. They have a condominium, and even though they didn't have a tremendous amount of equity in that condominium, they had a, a, a first mortgage on there, there was enough equity in that condominium that when we combined it with the acquisition of the, of the uh, intended property, it brought that loan to value from 75% down to 70%, which is within our comfort range, and we were able to um, able to do that. And, and in fact, and when they came to us, they also needed to close in a week. So that's another, another thing that, you know, normally for a bank, you know, close in a week, oh, yeah, you know, once they, they stop that. laughing and pick themselves up off the floor and sit back in their chair again, you know, they just sit there. Well, you know, it's that was funny. Yeah, Thanks I, for I, sharing. I don't know if you noticed, um, I, I recently talked to somebody uh, who we were talking about investments and a fund and, and, you know, why would anyone borrow, you know, this kind of money at this kind of rate? And then she even said, she says, yeah, you won't believe it. She says, I would be one of those people. She says, my house is worth a million dollars, and I owe 50000 and the bank will not refinance it. Because that. all of their money is in IRAs. And, and they're and the, of the age where they're not, they're not working the, anymore. They're enjoying their Yeah, their and so their, their ability to repay is, you know, they're, they're looking at they're that living. going, uh, yeah, exactly. So they can't refinance a $50,000 loan on a million-dollar property. There are so many situations where um, you are limited in your ability to borrow conventionally from uh, through a mortgage broker or through your local bank, and yeah. it's it's all thanks to the extreme uh, banking reforms that were passed over the last several years. Uh, many of you may refer to it as the Dodd Frank uh, banking regulations, and thanks to Dodd Frank. In fact, more banking regulations, if you can believe it, are going. It, no, both, I know both of them are gone, but they've left this okay. horrific monstrosity in, in their in their legacy you know there there are um, there are more there are more regulations that are coming in place uh, October 1st and then January 1st uh, there are even more regulations so it's just it's only getting and continuing to get tighter. harder and tighter and yes and, but but suddenly I see a huge smile on Mark Hoff's face right. why is that <laughs> right well the silver lining and again you know I, I you know I suffer from empathy in other words I, I can I really feel badly for a lot of people who should be able to get conventional financing at 4%. And so anyway, um, you know, companies like Pacific Private Money, yes, we absolutely thrive. Our fund is thriving. And and, uh, and again, we're a great plan B when plan A fails. So. And uh, one more time, you know, give out your information. To so PacificPrivateMoney.com, we're a local Bay Area um, uh, mortgage banker, and uh, we're at 415 883 2150. Call and leave a message, and we'll call you back next week. Or yeah, just go to PacificRockMoney.com. And uh, Catherine, we got only got about thirty seconds left. Is there anything real quick you wanted to bring up? Again, just a reminder: it's it's September. It's September. Yeah, plan for the uh, last. Plan, month, yeah, the for last taxes. Four, you got four more months to plan for the rest of the year. Yeah. How do people get a hold of you? Four one five four six one eight five hundred. I've referred some business to Catherine. Uh, been the clients kept. Uh, Got back to me and said they're very happy with you. So happy. call Captain Harris CPA. All right, thoughts for the day. Gerald Ford said, I know I'm getting better at golf because I'm hitting fewer spectators. <laughs> and Jack Benny said, give me golf clubs, fresh air, and a beautiful partner. And you can keep the clubs and the fresh air. All right, tune in next week to The Best of Investing. We're going to be giving away more free vacations for answering trivia questions. Thanks for listening. On behalf of our team, I'm Edward Brown. We're wishing you the best of investing. So long. Good. Sorry, I didn't get that on that whole last second. No, that was that, good. That, that, that attempt, that just goes by too fast. Mm -hmm. That one's actually a good one to put on point out while you're doing.